Um, so last week when we were talking about surfaces, and so it's sort of a reminder of what we're talking about, and we built some surfaces. So this is going to be a, a quiz for those who are there, okay? So I'd like you to come to the board. So last week we were talking about surfaces and groin data. Again, and especially for those who are new, uh, Timor, uh, if, if, if you're un unsure of what I say because I speak English and I have a strange accent, please just raise your hand and ask, okay? Um, so that's what we're talking about surfaces and glowing diagrams. One surface that we looked at was the sphere. So I'll write the name. And I'd like someone to come up and draw me a sphere. Draw me. Yiva? Go. However you like. No, this is just a Не, ну шарик. И квадрат. Good, and could you give it a three-dimensional look? Very good, very good. Excellent, there's a sphere. Thank you, Yeva. And would someone like to give a glowing diagram for a sphere? That's a sphere. What about a glowing diagram for? So I'll start you off. If we have a, what a glowing diagram is, we draw a, a diagram in the plane, but we fold up the edges in some way to form a, a surface. Does anyone remember? Does anyone would like to have a go at drawing a, arrows on this square so that you get a sphere? I mean, that's Andrew, you want to try? I remember something like this. Андрей, не надо было никаких внутренних линий э, рисовать. Можно было обойти склейками только. Помните, склеивали что-то вроде подушки? Like a pillowcase. Yeah. You built that so you, it, you identify these two inches. Нет, нет, нет. Никаких ребро целиком склеивается. Нет, нет, Андрей, просто перепутали. Do you recognize this? If you take this disc, if you, if you are, are you familiar with if you do that and you get a sphere? Yes. Okay, so let's do the same thing here. I remember that case when we draw a diagonal okay, so line it's, and uh, then we connect. Yes. So we're just going to do the same thing. Uh -huh. Fold this edge to this edge. Yeah. So that's going to go to there. And that one is going to go to there. Yes. Okay. So we just... So we just made that little triangle. So even though the sphere is sort of the, the simplest surface, it's sort of the going diagram wasn't uh, so obvious. Okay, what about what's another surface we looked at? So that's a sphere. Cylinder. Cylinder, okay. Cylinder. Лиана, would you like to give us a cylinder? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And if you like, you can try and draw a glowing diagram for it as well. Excellent. Excellent. And can you draw us a cylinder just a... Невидимую тоже. Пунктиром невидимую линию. Excellent. So for those who aren't here, here, if you take a sheet of paper, these arrows mean that you glue this edge to this edge. So you fold up, take a piece of paper, this, and you're going to glue this edge to this edge. 
Okay, that's what the arrows mean, and when you do that, you form a cylinder. There's a cylinder. Um, Nikolai, can you give us an, can you name us another surface we looked at last week? Taurus? Excellent. So can you come and draw us a tour? Excellent. And can you give us a three-dimensional picture of it? So, and for those who are, who are here, so it's like a cylinder, you start with a cylinder, so ignore these bits for a moment. Okay, so it looks like this. So you start with your cylinder, you identify these two edges, so you fold this guy up to here, to the cylinder. Okay, now these two arrows mean that you have to, identify, you have to glue this edge, to that edge. So if you take your cylinder, take your cylinder, so your torus, first you identify these two, that gives you a cylinder, and I'm sure you can see over there. Can you see? You can't see. To build your torus, you start by identifying these two edges to get to this, and you're left with a cylinder, but with these two edges identified. And so when you build your torus, you have to bring it around. And that's what Nikolai did there. And last week we built, we built torus, torus, which, which is a little bit difficult to do uh, by hand, but we managed it. Uh, Nikolai, other Nikolai, could you give us another surface? The murderous tree? Maybe a surface. Could you come up and draw it for us? Do you think you can try and draw it? Well, no, really it's uh, understood. Uh, it's, di it's quite difficult, but something like... Yes, sir. I'm not good at drawing. Yeah, but it's great. It gets the idea, of course. <laughs> it's, 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 so, um, do you take a... Um, so you take a, well, we've got a cylinder. So it's like a cylinder for those who went up here last week. But instead of gluing like that, you glue the other way. And so you have to do a twist. If I, if it did, no, no, did anyone bring their props from last week, their constructions? So I didn't bring them, but um, uh, at least we could have seen them physically. Uh, so it's a Möbius strip. Were there any other services we looked at? Nicola? Uh, plain board. Plain board, okay. So let's get to that in a second. While well, we've got these up on the board, let's look at which are, which have, which have edges. Does, and let's first ask that. Does the sphere have any edges or boundary? No, it doesn't. Okay. And that's the square dome. Does the torus have any edges? No. No, it doesn't. Does the cylinder? Yes, no. it has two. It has two edges. These two? And the Möbius strip, how many does this have edges? One. one. It has one because this, when you go along here, you hit this point and then you're up here. Just one circle to down. Okay, now if you look at the gluing diagram, so this had one edge. Had one edge. And the cylinder had two edges. And these ones had no edges. This one in If you look at the gluing diagram, so let's compare these two gluing diagrams, the one with no edges, with these gluing diagrams, which do have edges. Can you see, if you looked at this, can you see, without knowing that it's a sphere, can you see that it doesn't have any edge? Look, look at the side. What, what, is, what is different about, for example, this gluing diagram? With this gluing diagram. Well, on the spheres gluing diagram, each side is glued to some other side. While on the Möbius bands gluing diagram, there are some sides which are not glued to anything. Do you see that? So here, every side is glued to some other side. These two. Same with the torus. These two are glued and these two are glued. Whereas the cylinder, 
these two sides aren't glued anywhere, and these two sides aren't glued anywhere. So from a gluing diagram, you can see whether or not you have boundary or whether or not you have edges just by looking at whether or not there are sides that aren't glued. What about, what about orientable, uh, what about orientability? Let's look at it. Uh, is a sphere orientable? So let's go around. Um, Okay, so Andrew thinks the sphere is orientable. Yeva, is the sphere orientable? Yes. Um, Nikola, is the torus orientable? The torus. Mm, yes. So let's see how we can decide if we're orientable. Let's draw a, let's draw a man on the torus. Oh. Hmm? And let's make man walk upstairs towards. When he hits the boundary, when he hits this point, where does he have to go next? If he's going up, walking up, walking up, where does he go next? Down. Down? Okay, now draw a dot here. Does the dot go here or here? It was on the right and it goes to the right. It stays on the right, so his head is going to come back to here. I draw another one. So he's going to keep going straight. His, his, his bright is stayed on his right. Okay, what about on the Möbius strip? We do a man. Hits that boundary. And let's I'll draw his right side. And his left side. Okay, walks on the boundary. Ah, uh, sorry, walks on the move strip. Hits the boundary. Now this red dot, I've got two dots over here. This red dot here, is it going to go to this dot or this dot? Oh, they're not Above or below? They're not the top one. So the red is here, and the blue goes here. So his head, he's, his head is flipped around, so if I continue along. His right, it becomes left. Okay, so that tells us it's not orientable. What else did we look at? Orientableness, edges. And, okay, and let's go to the, the next surface you, Nikolai, remind us of. What was the, what was the other surface, Nikolai? Uh, clean bottle. Clean bottle, okay, so it's a clean bottle. I gave you a clean bottle. Clean, it's a family mathematica. Clean bottle, okay, so it's a clean bottle. Okay, so, so now we're going to draw doublers. So, so what, I, what I was just about to say is, so instead of using double arrows, um, what we can do instead, we're going to label them. Okay, so this A, this going to be A, this B, this B. Okay, so before we were drawing this, it's just like that. Okay. But equivalently, we could just label them with no letters. So that means that A is glued like that, and B is glued with a twist. So we can. So, so this looks like the torus. Looks like the torus, except that these now the torus had these top, uh, top and bottom sides identified up this way. Now they've got a twist. Okay. And so we could try to draw it uh, the climb bottle uh, in three dimensions, but it's a, it's going to be we're not going to be able to do it in three dimensions like the torus because so we first fold a cylinder. We first identify these two sides to get a cylinder, but then we need to glue this side to that side. And we, we can't do it in, in three dimensions. But let me draw you a picture. So, so let's bring it around.
So this is how you can see. So here's the climb bottle. I've identified these two edges. Think of the cylinder. Okay? And I've just stretched out the cylinder a little bit. So that now my cylinder looks like this. And I need to glue these two edges of the cylinder but so that this arrow and this arrow glue together. And so I had to do some kind of twist. So do you see how we can't? You have to, you have to get inside and to pull that down and somehow twist it to identify that way. Okay, so you see it's something tricky. But let's see if we can do it in four dimensions. Four dimensions. Okay. So let's. So I can't draw in two dimensions. Let's see if we can draw it in four dimensions. Okay, so let's 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 get to here. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start by drawing a bottle, like a climb bottle. A climb bottle in four dimensions. So I'm gonna start with my a bottle. That's my cylinder. Okay, and I'm going to stretch it like we did before. Okay, so I just stretched out the neck. Okay, okay, now I want to glue this circle, that arrow going that way, just to look the arrow, and I'm going to glue it to that arrow. Okay, so I'm going to bring the, the end of the bottle inside, okay? Now, I can't do that in three dimensions I'm, because I'm going to cut through my bottle. Okay, that's why I need a fourth dimension, okay? So what I'm going to do, so this is, I'm going to, so at present it's in three dimensions, but I'm going to put it, the bottle in four dimensions, okay? So remember that three dimension is what we live in, this room, one direction, another direction, third direction. I'm going to give it a fourth direction, okay? And, oh, let's see. Have you, have you ever seen, I'm not sure how to say it, do you know what infrared is? Do you know what infrared goggles are? Infrared goggles, so these, uh, so maybe, oh, maybe, some time ago, let's see. Have you ever seen a picture of the sun? Where the hot spots are shown red and, and the different color different colours correspond to different heats. And so in, infrared goggles are these goggles you put on so you can see at night. And so yeah? I don't understand it. I didn't understand it clearly, sorry. So infrared, so it's a it's a it's a scale on the spectrum of um of light. Where oh. You may have seen, has anyone seen the movie Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger? No? Okay. So, so infrared, infrared goggles, infrared goggles, you see, you see heat. Okay, so red, uh, sorry, hot things show up as red, and cold things show up as blue. Yeah. Okay, so there's a spectrum of colours and they correspond to heat. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to allocate, I'm going to, uh, each point on the bottle is going to have a different heat. Okay, so blue is going to correspond to cold, and red is going to correspond to hot. Okay? And that heat, the temperature, is going to be our fourth dimension. So remember last week we looked at x, y, z being uh, coordinates on a on a, in a three-dimensional space, and we looked at, we were thinking of a fly buzzing around. At present it might have x, y, z coordinates, and then we looked at how can we give it extra dimensions. And one of them was we could give it a temperature. The fly could have a temperature. Коль, он просто объясняет, yeah. что есть четвертая координата. Температура здесь вообще ни при чем. Он просто боится, что вы не знаете. Okay, so we're going to give the bottle points on the bottle a temperature. Okay, and the the, the colors are going to correspond to the temperature. Okay, so so blue is going to be cold. Or the bottle is cold. Yeah, but now when I go along the neck, I'm going to get warmer and warmer. Warmer and warmer. And 
until the, the end of the bottle is very cool. Okay. Now, okay. So remember this is the temperature for the cup. Приподняли горлышко по четвертой координате. So it's really hot. Okay, so its temperature is very high. But the, the, this part of the bottle is blue, so its fourth coordinate is very small. Okay, so these two points, they have different temperatures. Okay, so in four-dimensional space, these, these fourth coordinates are different. So if I bring the red towards the blue, Okay, so now I've brought that the end of the bottle onto the, the rest of the bottle. But now the red is, the, I've got, this part of the bottle is really hot, this part of the bottle is really cold. So in four-dimensional space, these two parts of the bottle aren't touching. They aren't touching because they have different temperatures. Okay, so I can bring it, and I'm going to bring it through. I can poke it through, poke it through, and this should remember how the arrows were going. Okay. So I poke it through in four dimensional space, and now I'm just going to bring it all the way down. Okay, this arrow is going to go into it. Sorry. Okay. And so I haven't, and I haven't got any. Intersections. And you've got neat and six because the blue and the red are different points. So let's just go through. So that was my bottle. I bring the neck around. And I touch, but I've got different fourth coordinates. I'm in, uh, not touching, and I bring all the way through, and then down. Okay. So this is the climb bottle. The climb bottle. Okay. So. In four dimensions, we can do things that we can't do in three dimensions. Um, uh, any questions on that? Okay, let's let's look at other properties of climb bottle. Oh, Liana, can you see this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is the climb bottle? Does the climb bottle have edges? Why doesn't it have any edges? From the going garden, how can you see it doesn't have any edges? It doesn't have any spare sides, which are not good to anything. Okay. Uh, Pardon me? Uh, I think the has one edge. Where is the edge? Let, let me ask you a different question. Do you have, are there any sides of the square that aren't glued? Ah, so there are no edges. Right, so no edges because every side is glued. 